experience. Uh, so as uh, Fatou mentioned, my, na my name is Pierre Rosin. Uh, I'm a student part of the FinML program and also a data analyst at Autorité des Marchés Financiers, which is uh, the Quebec uh, financial regulator. Uh, and today uh, I will present you a subject that I've been working on my internship, which is uh, edging basket option with deep learning. And I want to emphasize uh, the fact that uh, this project has been done uh, to uh, respect a certain framework of a model free approach. And uh, we will see throughout this presentation, what are the advantages of this model free approach and how we can, uh, how uh, the artificial, uh, artificial intelligence framework helps to uh, enhance this model free approach. So uh, as an introduction, I just want to uh, frame the limitations of a model-based approach uh, in order to edge and uh, in order to, uh, to perform risk management on the financial market. So basically the limitation of a model-based approach uh, is that it struggles to adapt to fundamentals and to a specific uh, market environment. So fundamentals, if I were to define that, uh, are basically qualitative information about the market that determines its uh, stability and health. You can think uh, about unemployment rates, growth, inflation, monetary policy, or any indicator that would uh, indicate macroeconomics or microeconomics fact about the market. So yeah, th those uh, indicators are, are, uh, are the model-based uh, framework fails to uh, basically uh, adapt to those fundamentals. Uh, also, uh, the financial market is constantly changing. Models need adaptability. Uh, the thing is that uh, model-based framework are more constrict and nowadays the markets are flooded with a high amount of liquidity. And this implies that we are seeing more volatility. Uh, the economic cycle are becoming more and more frequent and the cycles are becoming more and more uh, volatile. And uh, in uh, those conditions, some models just don't hold anymore. And uh, also one uh, reason of the of, of this big volatility spi spikes uh, is that since most of the participants of the market uh, use uh, the same models, there is a kind of the standardization of the of risk management pr procedure, which create a hyper correlated market during recessions, and this hyper correlated market during crisis. Uh, accelerates uh, the the downturn of the during crisis, uh, where we've seen a situation like during the COVID crisis, where even safe assets or assets that, that are considered as safe, like gold, for example, uh, were being uh, were going down. So uh, basically, model-based approach. Uh, don't tackle this issue and we will see uh, now uh, in the artificial intelligence framework how we can uh, diverse the model used on the markets. Okay, so uh, from my presentation, uh, I will uh, in the first part define uh, the, the, the goal, what we are trying to, to do here, what's, the, what's uh, some uh, financial principles, some definitions in order to frame our problem. Then I will make a, a, an overview of the artificial intelligence framework Well, I'll uh, uh, go through the strategy from the start to the end. Uh, and then uh, talk a little bit about the risk evaluation uh, uh, used in those models. All right, so let's get started. Uh, so first let's go with some definitions. So uh, an edge uh, is an investment used to reduce the risk of adverse price movement in the position. So when you think about the perfect edge, it would be one that eliminates all variants of a position or risk basically. Uh, and so the idea is, it's to plan ahead of time to mitigate the effect of big change in prices. All right. So this is uh, the task that we are trying to do. We are trying to hedge a product here. Uh, a basket 
is a financial instrument whose underlying is a weight in sum of different assets. So the underlying composing the basket can be currencies, bonds, securities, commodities, anything you can think of. And uh, those kind of uh, those kind of assets are uniquely built to fulfill the needs of participants. Uh, so between the buyer and the seller, and uh, those kind of assets are traded on a market called OTC market, which means that it's not on the, it's the 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 trade is being done directly between the buyer and the seller, which means that uh, since this basket is being uniquely built for one transaction, in order to close this transaction, you need to find someone that is willing to take the opposite position, which means that when you enter this kind of trade, you cannot close it unless you find someone that wants to take the opposite, uh, the opposite transaction. Therefore, uh, you want to edge such product in order to cover your risk uh, because you can't close the position uh, as, uh, as um, easily as a, another index fund or any uh, underlying trade on the, on the public market. So to simplify what the basket is here in this presentation, we'll talk about an index. Uh, so an index can be seen uh, as a basket because basically an index is a weighted sum of stocks. And uh, in our following uh, presentation, we will use the dungeon industrial average as a uh, as uh, the our basket, and uh, to introduce to be the dungeons, uh, the dungeons is an equity index that tracks the performance of the thirty largest uh, of thirty large cap company uh, of the U.S. So, uh, if you want to have the weights of the dungeons industrial average, here they are. Uh, so uh, there are thirty underlying, as I was mentioning. And in order to be part of the index, uh, the company needs to represent a significant portion of the US economy, basically. And the weight is being done on uh, the proportions they are representing in this economy. All right. So now what is an option? All right. So uh, here we will only talk about uh, call option. Uh, there is also uh, something called put option, but uh, uh, since we are in this format, we'll not talk about this. I will just define what's a call option. Okay. So a call option is a contract which allows the right to buy an asset at a specific strike price prior to a date chosen in advance. So basically, you are uh, entering a, a contract uh, uh, at one point and then decide, okay, uh, in one year, uh, I, I, I want to, I, uh, I said that the price is gonna be higher than, than K, this strike price. And so I want to take the different, I want to enter the position uh, before, uh, before this date. And so uh, you, you, you enter the position and when the, the, the position arrives at maturity, you get uh, the payoff of the difference between what's the strike, what's the price of the stock uh, at maturity and the, the price set in advance, okay? Uh, and to simplify all of this, you can simply uh, look at the payoff here. So uh, here in this graph, you can see uh, the payoff of buying a position of the Dungeons Industrial Average. So this will be what you get if you buy uh, one position uh, on uh, the 30th of April here. Uh, until the, the 4th of April in 2020. And here is, uh, is the payoff of a basket of, uh, of an option, actually, on the Dow Jones industrial average uh, with a strike price of 1.06. So basically, you see here, you mitigate all the effect when uh, the, it's below the strike price. And uh, you don't start at zero because you pay something called a premium, which is something you need to pay in order to enter the position. Uh, so uh, just to framework our, to frame our goal here, uh, what we are trying to do here is to uh, edge the payoff of this uh, graph. Okay, so uh, you, just if if you, if I wasn't very clear about what's an option or I think what what we want to do here is uh, hedge the payoff of this graph. Okay, 
of this position, which is a call option of the dangerous industrial average with a strike price of 1.06. Okay. So uh, next slide. So now I will, uh, since uh, the goal is to hedge this position, I will present uh, the, the artificial intelligence framework around the strategy. Okay. So uh, next slide. So the first step here uh, is uh, the, the first step here uh, is to uh, simplify uh, the index. Actually, uh, since the dangerous in industrial average has 30 underlying, uh, in in is uh, uh, is composed of 30 underlying, uh, we want to reduce the number of assets uh, we use in our hedging strategy. So uh, this is done to mitigate the trading costs. And this will also in practice reduce the dimensionality of the problem, okay? Uh, leading to a more optimal solution and a more robust conversions. So uh, if you're familiar with, uh, with uh, the jargon of uh, machine learning, this is uh, basically to mitigate the effect of uh, the curse of dimensionality. Uh, here in our strategy, uh, the number of underlying uh, will be reduced to 10, okay? So we will use 10 underlying to edge the basket, 10 underlying compose of the basket. And to choose the 10 underlying, uh, we will compute uh, 10 principal components explaining 99% of the variance or the risk uh, of, the, of the index. And after those principal components are created, we will compute something called the z-score uh, of each of the underlying and take the top 10 underlying who have the best z-score. Uh, and here you can see the, the result of the, the z-score after this computation. Uh, and basically uh, we rearrange, we sort it uh, descendingly and take the top 10. So this will be the top 10 stocks of the basket we'll, we'll use in order to edge, okay? So uh, now we have our 10 underlying and we can go to the next step. All right, so now that we have uh, the 10 underlying, uh, we will actually build a portfolio of option uh, with option uh, with uh, the option that uses the underlying of the selected assets in the previous uh, in the previous step. So the goal in this portfolio option is to choose the optimal strike price for if each of the option uh, and how do we uh, perform this uh, optimization? Well, we take a criterion that we will define in the next slide. And this will be our function to optimize, okay? And uh, in order to uh, compute the criterion, we need to do simulations uh, on the path of the stocks. So we need to do a, a forecast and the forecast will be done using a Monte Carlo simulation method. Uh, and here in, in uh, all this presentation, we will uh, assume that the the stocks follow a log normal process. Uh, I will not go further into more detail about the simulation because it's a very big topic, but just keep in mind that uh, uh, the log normal pricing model is one of the most basic, uh, most basic model uh, you can find. Uh, and, but uh, there's many way to do the simulation. You can think about many other models. Uh, so in the log normal framework, uh, this is what an hundred uh, simulation of one year looks like on a stock. And uh, here in our model, we'll perform like more than uh, uh, hundred thousand simulation for each of the stocks. So, uh, so yeah, so we will uh, perform a lot of simulation in order to have uh, very precise results. All right, so, uh, now that we have our method, uh, in order to select the portfolio of option, we follow the, the following uh, uh, procedure. So uh, first we will simulate the path of the underlyings of the baskets, then choose the criterion to edge on, and then choose the strike price that optimize the criterion. Okay, 
So this is what a criterion would look like. Here I use a criterion called the minimum variance. And uh, basically what you do to compute uh, this criterion is you compute uh, the baskets, uh, the basket payoff minus uh, the portfolio of option. And here, uh, the, here the little KY is uh, what you are trying to see. Those are the optimal strike price you are trying to seek. Okay, and so you compute uh, this uh, into brackets. You put uh, it, uh, you, you make it squared in order to have a variance term, and you take uh, the expectation of all the simulations, and then you want to minimize this amount. And uh, the constraint here is to uh, have the portfolio op option. Uh, have an edging cost that doesn't go upper than a certain set amount here. Okay. So uh, if, if uh, this formula is not clear to you, just uh, keep in mind that all we are trying to do here is minimize the variance of the path. Okay. Minimize the risk, actually. This is uh, what this formula means. All right. And so uh, after this first step of edging, this is uh, the result we'll get uh, for uh, the, the, the basket option of strike price 1.06, as I mentioned in the previous slides. So we get the following edging portfolio. And uh, this will be the payoff on the, on the strategy, OK? So uh, the payoff you are seeing here is actually so the payoff of the basket option minus the payoff of the edging portfolio. Now here, you can see uh, because of some shock during uh, the COVID crisis pandemic, uh, the hedge is not that ideal, but we will see in the next slide how we can improve that in the second step uh, to our edging method, okay? But keep in mind now we have this edging portfolio and we want to edge it even further, okay? All right. So uh, now I will introduce you to a uh, type of arch architecture, uh, a new neural network called uh, LSTM. So uh, LSTM stands for Long Short Term Memory Network. And uh, in order to define this network, I first need to define what is a RNN, a recurrent neural network. So a uh, recurrent neural network is a network capable of learning long and short-term dependency of a sequence. So what's a sequence? Uh, a sequence would be, uh, if, if I were to, uh, to make uh, an analogy to uh, language processing, for example, well, a sequence could be uh, a text or, sent, uh, or, uh, or so, some sentence or just a, a, a bag of words, basically. And so, uh, so, uh, for example, if you take this sentence here, uh, it will be easier uh, to forecast the, the words you have here, which is cook, for example, because uh, you have some information uh, in the sentence before, okay? So th this is what the recurrent network seeks to do, it seeks to keep uh, information that is, uh, that is available before in order to forecast what is given after, okay? And uh, basically the recurrent neural network, uh, they have an hard time carrying uh, information uh, which are come from an earlier stage of the sequence. So uh, the, the further the word is, is, uh, is in the sentence, uh, the word will be uh, like at the earlier stage of the sentence, uh, the recurrent neural network will struggle to, uh, to, to measure its impact. And so to mitigate this effect, uh, we will use uh, um, an architecture uh, called LSTM, a long short term memory, uh, who is capable of mitigating these effects of uh, short term memory using a mechanism called gates. And what you can think of gates, gates are just neural network that regulates the flow of information uh, given in the network. Uh, the, the problem that recurrent neural network has uh, 
if you're familiar with uh, machine learning, uh, the, the, the problem the, in a more technical world is called vanishing gradient. Okay, so uh, if you are more familiar with machine learning, I'm, I'm sure you heard of this term before. All right. So now that we define the architecture of our model, we will see how we can use it in order to edge uh, in the second step our portfolio. Okay. So what we will do here for each uh, option of the portfolio, we will train uh, a neural network based on the LSTM architecture. Okay, and uh, we will follow a reinforcement learning procedure, which just which works like this for every option of the portfolio. So first, we create, uh, we simulate the path of the underlying to create uh, the, the trading environment, okay, uh, as we did before. So we do this one time, and this will be the environment for the rest of the learning. Then, for each steps, uh, we compute, uh, we, we use the neural network to compute uh, the trading decisions made by the agent. Uh, and this trading decision has just a set of uh, buy and sell order uh, in order to edge the, the underlying position, uh, the, the, the option, sorry. And uh, after this trading decision is made, you compute the reward associated with the strategy. So what you do here is uh, you compute a, a, risk, uh, a risk measure uh, that, that takes into account uh, the, uh, the risk aversion of the agents. And we will see on, on, on next slide uh, how uh, we can uh, use uh, many other, uh, many uh, risk major, but uh, those used in this model are called CIVAR and mixed CIVAR, which I will define the, uh, further in the presentation. And then once the reward is computed, you update the state of your neural network based on the reward. And you repeat that until you have conversions. Okay, so in the end, uh, what you will have is uh, trading decisions for every options of the portfolio. Okay, so uh, in our contents, basically, uh, uh, the the sequence we were talking about, so the sentence in a way, uh, we, it's just a list of order to make on the market until the maturity of the option. So during the life of the option. Uh, and so uh, it, it's just a list of buy and sell order. And uh, we are what what we will do here is edge all the call option by computing. Uh, a series of, uh, of uh, rebalancing, uh, rebalancing position, which are basically buy and sell orders. And the, the formula would look like this if you aggregate all the all the stocks of the of the portfolio. Okay. So so keep in mind now we just have uh, a list of buy and sell orders in the market for every option of the portfolio. All right. Uh, so now uh, this would be the result of this second step of edging. So uh, here, the payoff you are seeing is the payoff of the basket option minus only uh, the edging strategy you've seen before. So it's just the basket option minus the list, the, the list of buy and sell order on the market. Why is that? Well, we don't need to take into account the edging portfolio anymore because uh, in the previous step, we were selling it and now we are buying it back and putting a buy and sell order on the market. Okay. So just keep in mind that the edging portfolio is not part of our model anymore here uh, in our, in our, when computing the payoff. All right. And uh, Therefore, you are able to edge the basket using only a list of uh, buy and sell order using a subset of the underlying of the basket. So uh, now the model takes five days to compute. So unfortunately, I had to take a run that I did six months ago. 
and I want you guys to uh, watch only the the curve in orange here, which will be which is actually the the results uh, of the the run based on the same parameter that I showed you before. And uh, you can see that the, the curve in orange is here is very resilient uh, during the, the COVID crisis here. Uh, you have a really very, very resilient hedge uh, using only 10, 10 underlying of the basket. So uh, as you can see here, those are, are pretty good results uh, based on the this model three approach. All right. So uh, on the next slide, I'll talk a little bit more about the risk evaluation of the model. So uh, let's define a bit what CVAR is. So CVAR is a risk, ass a risk assessment measure derived from value VAR, which is called uh, VAR is a, means a value at risk. Uh, and it's more convenient to use CVAR uh, in a machine learning optimization since uh, CVAR is a convex function. Now co convexity is, uh, is, uh, is needed in order to optimize a, a um, function in the in a machine learning framework. Now CVAR has one hyperparameter called alpha and this alpha uh, will measure the risk aversion of, of the agent. So the highest the alpha you have, the more you are trying to mitigate the tail risk. Uh, whereas with I alpha, you are, uh, is more broadly used uh, for investment that has more upside potential and where agents are less risk averse, basically. Uh, what you can note here, so, so uh, just for high alpha here, so here you have a 0 0.99, you can see that the tail risk here is uh, greatly reduced. And also uh, one more comment, uh, when you have an alpha of 0 0.5, the neural network model is able to uh, identically capture a method called delta edging on the Black-Scholes model. So just a note on that. All right. And uh, to even more uh, broader range of uh, risk function, of risk function, we can use the additivity property of the CVAR function, giving uh, another uh, risk measure called mixed CVAR, which is basically a weighted sum of uh, CVAR. So it's it's uh, used to uh, broadly diversify the the models of uh, of, of the, the the different number of risk measure available, uh, and so. Uh, so you can think about more complex uh, risk, risk aversion of, of uh, agent, more complex modeling of risk aversion of agent with this kind of measure. And you can also think of any convex risk measure that can be used uh, as a reward to our network in order to, to uh, address the risk aversion to, of our agent. So uh, as a conclusion, uh, we just saw a model free approach to edging a complex derivative, which is a basket option. And this basket option can be simplified to an index fund or even a simple option. And uh, mod there is a lot of possibility uh, to, mo to, uh, to, to diversify the model and many steps of the strategy. So first there's modularity on uh, how, which model is used to simulate the path of the underlying. So you can think of uh, stochastic volatility method or technical analysis or worst case scenario even to simulate the path. There's many other models uh, you can think of. Uh, the number of underlying you choose in the subset uh, is also uh, something you can choose. Uh, the criterion you choose in order to optimize the strike price of the uh, intermediary uh, edging portfolio is also something that is modular in the model. Uh, and uh, there's also uh, finally uh, some adjustability on the reward on the risk measure of the agent uh, in the reinforcement learning procedure, 
so uh, you have a lot of moderati modularity in all those models and all of those uh, ca is captured from the sub from the um, from from the all the from the concatenation of the, all the model you use, so you have a, a lot of diversity uh, in this model. And uh, to sum up, so uh, uh, this model free framework uh, with the the broad range of models uh, uh, wider widens the possibility of of, uh, of of model you can choose. And uh, basically, and this is just a gut feeling I have, but uh, the, it's, it's so I would interpret it. Uh, if this kind of approach is used more broadly in our economy, uh, in the future, uh, in the future, the lack of diversity of model use will be reduced, and with a wider range of uh, model, uh, there's less, there will be less hyper -co correlation between I sets. Uh, and thus, if there is less uh, correlation, well, the systemic risk of our economy would be greatly reduced. So this, so this is how I would conclude this uh, conference. And uh, now this, it's time for questions. All right. Uh, thank you, Pierre. Um, very interesting. We do have a few questions in the chat um, from Ernest. Um, would you like to say them to, to, you can unmute yourself, Ernest, and ask your questions if you'd like. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Pierre. Thank you for your presentation. It looks much more interesting and promising. But uh, so far, um, I wanted to know, is it some written report on the project so that we can learn much more about it? Because this is very new, I think it's very, very new hot topic, but I wasn't able to find uh, reference uh, reference and, and some research on it. So I would like you to know whether uh, your report is available. This is some report that we can read much more on the topic. This was my first question. My second question was regarding the, the model you use. It's, for me, it looks much more like reinforced learning because we are talking about the reward, action, and so on. So I would like to know if you can clarify it for me. For, for me, you, you talk about uh, LSTM and, R, and R, LSTM and RNN, but for me, it looks much more like, like reinforced yeah. reinforced learning. And uh, at the end, I, I'm not sure that I understand the architecture of the model you train. Yeah. And at the end, but so some uh, some research paper practice that we can you can find to learn much more about the topic. Thank you. All right, uh, so about the report, uh, uh, if you want, I will uh, send it to you after the presentation. Uh, and uh, most of the model I used uh, are in the reference of the report. So you can uh, read all the architecture there. Uh, for the architecture of the model, so let me go back in the slides. So uh, you use a reinforcement learning uh, architecture indeed, but how the agent will compute the trading strategy is done through an uh, LSTM, okay? So basically you combine those two core concepts. You use the LSTM to compute the, the trading strategy, but you also so use the reinforcement learning framework in order to update the the, the state of the network based on the the simulation uh, you 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 have on the on on uh, on, uh, on the underlying of the option. Uh, basically, what what you do is you have reinforcement learning. There's many ways to do uh, the trading decision in reinforcement learning. You can think about a more deterministic way to do it. But you can also use a neural network to, to do so. And this is what I choose to do here. Does that answer your question? Uh, you, you are on mute. Uh, OK. Uh, any, any other question, maybe? OK, 
Okay, um, so if there's no other questions, Ernest, uh, you can, I think, uh, connect with Pierre if you'd like after if you have more questions or you want to get the report. Thank you very much, Pierre. Uh, yeah. Great job. I think uh, um, so Jeremy has a question. Jeremy has a question. Okay, go ahead, Jeremy. Yeah, uh, yeah, sorry, I, I didn't, uh, I missed the first time you asked for the questions, but uh, thanks, Pierre. It was really, really nice. Um, I was curious because you work at uh, the IMF, but um, who do you think would be like the main users of such a technology? Would it be more like AMF or other kinds of businesses? Well, uh, uh, I think, uh, I mean, the purpose of this, uh, of this project, for, for me at least, uh, was to uh, understand more how the new technologies and our machine learning framework can help in order to reduce systemic risk in the economy okay and so uh here uh when we talk about a specific product like basket options or uh, very complex derivative well it's it will be more like bank or hedge fund that would Build those kind of uh, of derivatives and then and then sell it to between them between the big institutions. Whereas, uh, if if you talk more about uh, edging of uh, an option, a single option, or something that is more publicly traded, well, uh, any uh, trader can think of a strategy in order to edge his position. So it depends really on. Uh, which uh, derivative you want uh, to, uh, at which complexity your basket option is built. Uh, and uh, and yeah, the, the, the goal of this project was mainly to, to study the systemic risk, uh, uh, the, the, the possibility to reduce systemic risk uh, based on the machine learning approach. Thanks. Um, we have Abde that has a few questions. Uh, you can go ahead, just unmute yourself and ask them. Thank, thank you very much. Thank, thank you, Pierre. Uh, actually, I just came at a later stage to get the, the aim from the beginning, but now it's much clearer. It, it just for, for this kind of topic, uh, actually, well, there's different approaches. So the one and the, which is the kind of appealing topic right now is more using the reform uh, machine learning uh, to, to do the hedging. That's a basic question. So have you tried actually to see or in different market environments, if this approach still works, for example, or comparing this machine learning approach to simple regression, for example, to see what's the benefit. Because I remember seeing a presentation two months ago where the comparison, which was basically, which is the same topic, hedging options using machine learning approach and the outcome, but more from a hedging, uh, hedge fund perspective, was that the this kind of error or variance risk is much, much lower using regression, for example, than using machine learning approach. So have you tried this, for, for example, just to see the benefit and in, in will it be in terms of model or in terms of different market conditions? Thank you. All right, uh, so uh, I've tried to benchmark and especially when I was using the, the LSTN approach here, uh, which I will show you in this slide. Uh, I try to benchmark it against a black skull model, which is more classical. Uh, what, what I found interesting about uh, the, the, the machine learning uh, approach is that there is more modularity around uh, the strategy you have. And uh, maybe sometimes, and on some market conditions, a uh, model-based approach will work great. Uh, now, uh, I've tried on, uh, what, uh, on the normal conditions and on, uh, on the crisis condition. For the result I had, and now I, I didn't show them in this presentation, but uh, if you run this model, I, I, I will provide, a, there's some code uh, open source on my GitHub and you can try it on other period of time. Uh, from what I've tried, uh, I, I, I didn't find a uh, model-based approach significantly better than machine learning approach. And uh, in my opinion, there were much more uh, potential uh, due to the modularity of the and the adaptability to the machine learning approach. Th there were much more uh, advantage uh, to use those approach. 
no, uh, I agree with you. In some market conditions, uh, model-based approach will, will, great, will work great. But uh, when I was training models uh, during the COVID crisis based uh, with model-based approach, I really didn't find a, a model-based approach that was uh, very performance as performant as what I showed you. In normal market condition, well, yeah, uh, we can. It's uh, more uh, arguable, but uh, when uh, I mean, in my opinion, when you think to uh, to uh, to manage your risk, is mostly uh, to to manage the uh, the risk of worst case scenario and uh, manage the risk of crisis. So uh, I hope this answer your question. Yeah, quickly. Thank you. Uh, yeah, just maybe one last point. For me, uh, it bit definitely, but if we have kind of factor of the enhancement, because saying that it's it's a five times, 10 times better makes sense, especially, especially that the, the big difference that the cost actually, if you use machine learning, or for, you know, like for example, RNN or other stuff, it will take much time. You have a cost to do that, such calculation where a simple regression, you can do it actually in a few milliseconds. So the, 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 the cost benefit is really important. But yeah, yeah, this, and this answers all the questions. Thank you very much. Thank you. OK, um, last chance for any other questions. OK, well, thank you very much, Pierre. And um, have a great weekend, everyone. And sure, we'll see you coming. at the next session, hopefully. Thank you, Pierre. Thank you, everyone, for participating. Thank you. Bye, everyone.